Hello guys and welcome to United Kingdom of Cape Breton, the compulsory consumer states where vanity is considered the fifth carnal virtue. Our leader has taken to wearing medal adorn adorned, adorned military uniform in all public appearances. The country is preparing for war and agricultural employees work for peanuts. What a lovely place. We are doing quite well. We've um, got ca uh, capital punishment up to 13% of the population. So we're getting there. We're, we've nearly killed everyone. Government spending is up to 47.8% on uh, defense. We're getting uh, near Prussian levels. I want it to be over 50%. When it's over 50%, we can have a military coup and become Prussia. Cape Prussia, whatever. Uh, anyway, we, the the government, me, uh, the the great king of uh, the United Kingdom of Cape Breton, we are ready to address some issues. There are three issues here to discuss as leader, and we'll go through them starting from the bottom, because why the fuck not? Oh, medication, where art thou? Healthcare professionals around the country are in an uproar due to a five-month shortage of the pro popular broad-spectrum antibiotic Dankomycin. Despite claims by the drug manufacturer, the production levels are currently adequate for the market demand. Well, should we really be promoting antibiotics? Making diseases extra strong? I... Let's see what our advisors here have to say. We've got five people to check from. Leader, this is simply unacceptable, rages Cape Breton City General Hospital Chief of Staff Jules C. McGill, twirling his stethoscope like a pair of nunchucks. These companies own the patents for Dankomycin. Dankomycin. Let's just say Dankomycin. Your dank is omissing. And other drugs that are currently facing shortage. This means no other companies can produce these drugs, and our patients continue to suffer. Drug patents should be cancelled when supplies are short, so that others can take out the production shortfall, and so we can treat our patients properly. Well, this man is asking me to take away the patent holder's rights to demand his product at his own leisure, or supply his product at his own leisure. He wants me to become an authoritarian dictator and take away this man's right to hold a patent. I I do not agree with you, Jules C. McGill. Nice listen here. Now wait just a minute, exclaims Ms. CEO Lee Baxter as she struggles against McGill. By releasing the patent, we will never be able to recoup our R&D costs and create new medications. If anything, you need to take a good hard look at retraining those crackpot doctors who keep giving antibiotics to everyone with the sniffles. Yes! If they weren't so liberal with their prescribing, then we wouldn't need so many new antibiotics in the first place. Yes. Ms. CEO Lee Baxter here is absolutely correct. I am on board of her. Absolutely. And the third debate has... You know, all of this talk of copyrights and the cost of research and drugs has me thinking about the overall process, states your Secretary of Health, Kef, Ke Kefalver Harris. What if we just got rid of the regulations that lead to expensive medications? If drug companies aren't spending so much money on testing and research and developing development, then surely that will decrease the cost of drugs and the consumer's end. Ah, perhaps. Regulations are bad. If we can uh, drop all regulations, allow them to test on subjects like the illegal border crossers, our national animal, perhaps we will get the costs down a bit more and the consumers will be able to get them a lot easier. I, I'm not entirely sure, however. The fourth debate here. Surely you can't be serious about get putting... Uh, Surely you can't be serious about gutting consumer protections, exclaims Minister of Regulations Linne Zolid. Those regulations are in place for a purpose, to protect the public. Even so, changing rubber regulations will do nothing to ease the shortage of the vaunted Dankimosin. Anyways, the only option forward is plainly obvious. 
Force drug companies who own the patents to manufacture enough medication till this and any future shortages are relieved. I do not believe that we should be forcing companies to do anything against the world. That is just crazy. Bake the fucking cake. No, that is not the way to go. You should have the right to not do something. It doesn't matter what it is, if it offends you, if it leaves you to die. I do not give a fuck. There should be no forcing companies to do something against their will. It is their private company, their private enterprise. Leave them to it. Suddenly, without warning, your least favorite aunt from your mother's side bursts into your office. Junior, don't you know that the drugs our people are taking are filled with dirty chemicals such as magnesium, stearate, and sodium laurel, sulfate? Instead of drugs, you should provide people with organic herbs, such as the ones my health guru sold me. Before you can reply, she shoves a handful of repulsive herbs into your mouth, which you realise are nothing more than common garden flowers. Well, we will not be listening to our least favourite aunt. I think we'll go with the, uh, the lady here. By releasing the patient, we'll never be able to recoup our costs and create new medic medications. We should stop being so liberal with prescriptions. Yes, I agree entirely. Cooking with water and baking soda is considered patent infringement. <laughs> of course, of course. How has this affected my nation? Public health care has gone up. Lifespan has gone up. Ah, Industry mining has gone up. Economic freedom has gone up. Good. We want high economic freedom. Wealth gaps, health. Health has gone up a lot. I'm very happy with that. Intelligence has gone skyrocketing. Very good. The negatives, though, is our economic output has gone down 0.09%. And average income and authoritarianism going down is a good thing. Crime going down is good. Weaponization going down is maybe not, not too good. 11 guns per person is not enough. Gambling has gone down. Yes, because you're no longer gambling with people's lives. And obesity, of course. And let's move on to the next issue. A cola by any other name. An all-out fizzy soda war between the ancient Eki Cola and the younger, but significantly larger Eki Cola appears to be almost inevitable following Eki Cola's decision to print their already similar labels and identical shade of pink. This has rendered visual distinction between the two brands rather difficult. As usual, you have been called in to mediate before the streets run red with cherry soda. So they're Eki and Eki. So they Oh, Eki Cola and Eki E Cola. Oh, I see. There's, there is a slight difference. And we have three little things here to read. This is outrageous, shouts Holly Springsteen, the rep representative, representative of Eki Cola, as she slams one of her company's products onto your desk. We've been around in Cape Breton for longer than Eki E Cola has been. Even if they are more popular at the moment, this is a clear breach of our trademark, and we demand that they change the name and logo. We deserve the sole rights to our title and any variations thereof. Well, I am pro-freedom. If you want to name something exactly the same as somebody else's, that is your freedom to do so. I am not about to force people to do things. Like I said before, I will not force my subjects to do things, even if that that is a sort of uh, bad issue. In fact, they should be happy that they are harder to tell the difference if they have a lesser trade share. If they have a lesser trade market share and their highest competitor with a larger margin of the sales makes their product identical to theirs, then surely they're going to gain more sales. They should be happy about this. So we'll ignore her. She's obviously crazy. That is outrageous, yells Mark Broadside, the representative of Eki E. Cola, also slamming a can of Eki Cola onto your desk having mistaken it for one of his company's own products. <laughs> of course. So what if they came up with the name first? Everybody loves our products. We turn over way more product than those Eki Cola losers. What's the point of trademarks if they're going to get in the way of consumer choice? Yes. Yes, I agree. And now we have the last... The last... Part of, bit, of, uh, bit of input here. You two are outrageous, calmly mutters avid health enthusiast Sierra Hart, placing a kale smoothie on your desk. I do like kale. Uh, have you any idea how much sugar there is in a single can of these deaf colas? And don't get me started on the preservatives. All soda should be packaged in grey cans that specifically detail all of their contents and the hazards that come with them. This will hopefully lead to a community that is more health conscious as well as knowledgeable. Yes. Now, as I do say, I'm against regulations and force people to do stuff, but this, 
If we're trying to be a militaristic nation, we need our people to be as healthy as possible if we're going to send them into battle. So maybe this is somewhere where I can contradict myself and put in a bit of authoritarianism and impose upon my people. And fuck it, I'm going to do it. Citizens try to ignore gruesome pictures of decaying teeth printed on their soda cans. They better try to ignore it. No, 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 they better not ignore it. I want you to see it. I want you to see that your health is disgusting. You are a disgusting individual drinking that soda can, and I want you to know. I want you to know that your health is going down a drain. I want you to understand the full range of what you're doing to yourself. You must be healthy. We need you to fight on the battlefield. See, the military-industrial complex come along nicely. Very good. So health has gone up again, uh, safety has gone up, the weather somehow is affected by this. Lifespan has gone up again, economic output has gone up more than we lost it down before, and tourism, ah, but employment has gone down, that's a shame. Obesity has gone down, that's very good. Crime again gone down, weaponization gone down, that's not too good. But, very good, we did, uh, we did some positive things there. What's this? Hearsay heresy. Hopefully it has nothing to do with brands or... Whatever. But let's have a bit of a read. In a recent high profile trial in Cape Breton City, notorious mobster Maxine de Octomus Barioti was accused of murder, racketeering, grand theft, and jaywalking. The trial ended in acquittal on all counts after several witnesses, who had given detailed and damning out of court statements to police, failed to come to court. Uh. I'm terrible at reading these sort of things. The prosecutor's office has now come to you demanding that Cape Breton review its laws regarding the use of out-of-court statements. What a miscarriage of justice, shouts disgruntled district attorney Haley Dent, as she flings a huge stack of police reports on your desk. Look at all these great statements made by dozens of witnesses. But now that jerk Maxine goes for you because they didn't personally show up. You know how hard it is to wrangle up a dozen witnesses for trial? Like herding bats. The trial should have ended in a guilty verdict after five minutes. But the way things are, it's a coin flip. Whether justice is done or not. If a witness makes a report to a cop, that cop should be able to testify of what was said. I'm not terribly against that. But then a lawyer should be present if you're going to give anything that's going to be held. Otherwise you can be easily manipulated. Yes, you must protect the people from themselves. We must uh, have the police uh, and lawyers and all that shit thrown in. More employment. We must raise employment. You can't be serious, cries family attorney Tam Hagen. Who defended Barioti? Don't you realise we have this rule against out-of-court statements for a reason? A person can only have a fair trial if they get to confront their accusers face-to-face -face in open court. Yes, that does make perfect sense. Sometimes the reason witnesses don't show up to trial is that they know they were lying to the police all along. Allowing in all of these out-of-court statements will mean more innocent people get convicted. Sure, sometimes a guilty person will go free. Eh ahem, not my client, of course. But some actually guilty person... I don't get it. Why is it? Uh, but isn't it better a thousand guilty people go free than a wrongfully convict even a single person? Uh, well, we are a free nation, after all. <laughs> all of this is too complicated, interrupts Mark Commodus, an imperious-seeming minister. And this right here is why people are so darn sick of all these coarse legal shenanigans. Seems like any way you slice it, dumb rules get in the way of justice. I propose a third way. Ah, yes, the third way is the best way. Bring back trial by ordeal. Let the accused wrestle with an illegal border crosser. And if they <laughs> win, they didn't do it and get to go free. If they lose, we bury their remains in a shallow grave. It's a foolproof system that our ancestors used for a thousand years. And I'll tell you, they didn't waste a penny doing it. Neither will I. This is terrific. The strong are acquitted and the weak are trampled in trial by an illegal border crosser. That is fucking good. <laughs> the nation has abolished the court system. Great. So uh, economic output has gone up. Safety has gone up. Weaponization has gone up. Obesity has gone up. Oh, shit. Uh, employment has gone down. Yes, we just fired everyone. Nudity has gone down. Well, that's terrible. Uh, crime has gone down. Well, 
just because nothing is a crime. Lifespan has gone down. Oh, taxation has gone down. Weather has gone down. How on earth did this affect the weather? Intelligence has gone down. Ah, health has plummeted. Oh, that is terrible. Let me take your, let me take your part of this to put in the... Uh, put that in the old uh, Discord server. And yes, uh, this has come along quite nicely if you want to join it. I would prefer if you started a new nation before joining us. It's not terribly uh, fair in the re in the rankings to see all of our nations being trampled by 100 billion population states but hey come on over and check it out if you want to also there is a uh, discord server you're more than welcome to join not just because of this game but all the other games check out the other content on the channel if you're new to the channel and if you're old to the channel and you want to support the ever-growing wealth of content there is a patron link down below I'll see you guys there thank you for watching goodbye